Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan and welcome once again to the Vast and Ominous Comic Vault. I am finally doing a new vault. It's been a little while. I have stacks and stacks, gobs and gobs as it were, of comics that I have not read from the last several weeks that I am trying to desperately get caught up on so that I can start reviewing a lot more new comics for you. Uh, I'm reading a couple things here and there when they come out and keeping up with a, a, a couple of titles, but for the most part I just have a lot of comics that I'm buying and not reading right now because I've been busy catching up on Superhero Rewind and doing things for Midwest and panels and stuff like that. So anyway, I wanted to go ahead and weigh in a little bit on Ninja Turtles because a lot of people ask me to review issue 44 with the alleged death of Donatello and I just didn't get around to getting a video up for that. So uh, no time like the present. I just got finished reading this for an article that I'm going to be writing for the Supervillain Network and by the time this comes up on YouTube, that is libel to have already been written and posted, so be sure to check that out if you'd like to uh, read me being a little bit more articulate than I probably will be here. Uh, issue 45 is the aftermath of Krang uh, attempting to terraform the Earth and the Ninja Turtles finally beating him. Uh, we've been dealing with this status quo for quite a while now, and we've been in the middle of uh, a, a, an epic and uh, really fun battle uh, with Krang and the Technodrome, bringing back all that great 80s I iconography, but in a pretty heavy and serious, but still uh, uh, fun and wacky and out there kind of story all at the same time, uh, with as the series has had since the very beginning, tons and tons of uh, real character weight, and uh, the, these these uh, characters feel like real people, and there is uh, a lot to sink your teeth into. Uh, if you don't read, if you don't like Ninja Turtles, if you've never paid attention to it because it feels Feels like four uh, characters that are really interchangeable, uh, kind of like Power Rangers. Uh, you really should give this stuff a try because uh, it is uh, some pretty great, uh, if if not again quite out there science fiction. Uh, so this is uh, the aftermath, but not boring aftermath. In fact, um, I am I would argue that this feels a lot less aftermathy than the new the uh, Northampton stuff right after City Fall. This, uh, it, it, it just it still feels like there is quite a bit going on uh, because of all this uncertainty, and it is a very somber issue because we are uh, we are feeling the weight of uh, Donatello's touch and go status and his potential loss along with the turtles and uh, the rest of his friends. And again, uh, the word of the day here is uncertainty. Uh, we don't know where Krang is, we or, or we know where Krang is, but we don't know if uh, w what he's up to and if he might be able to show right back up and start wreaking havoc again pretty soon. Uh, we don't know where the Shredder is until the end of the issue, but at least our heroes don't know. And we don't know if Donatello is going to make it out alive. So I said alleged death because I got to the end of 44 and I have read enough comments in my life to have not to not immediately have bought oh they killed off Donatello in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles book uh, that would have been a really gutsy move and it certainly would have made uh, it, it would have been a really weighty thing to do uh, in with with everything that's been going on with uh, the the argument between should we go after Krang or should we go after Shredder and uh, you know Shredder is the more immediate threat but uh, Krang is the scarier one uh, the the, uh, the the immediate threat to ourselves versus the immediate threat to the planet. And uh, Donatello was advocating, of course, the entire time for the, I think, more logical, we really should should uh, forget the Shredder um, over figuring out how to open up a portal and uh, take care of the Technodrome, uh, because even though we can't see that happening right now, it's it's going on, and uh, once once he builds that Doomsday Weapon, his Death Star, uh, it's, it's game over, and who cares about the Shredder at that point? Um, and so he makes sense to be the logical sacrifice uh, because there's been all this argument all this time and the Turtles and Splinter have not really been a unified team on this. And finally, toward the end, everybody kind of got their act together and paid more attention to Donatello and they, uh, if, you've, if you've not been reading, uh, they kind of came up with a ruse to uh, make it look like Donatello was uh, leaving his brothers and 
doing the necessary thing, the necessary evil in teaming up with Shredder, but in fact it was their plan all along. And I was a little... That, that's that's one of the uh, one big things with this book that I was a little not, not totally happy with. Uh, it makes sense ultimately, but I didn't really care for the way that it was presented to the audience. Uh, I felt like it was a little bit teasy, and there there was some great uh, there was some some great tete a tete between uh, Donatello and, and and Shredder in initially setting up that alliance, and I uh, like like th that kind of uh, that kind of consequentialist viewpoint of do whatever is necessary for the greater good really seems like it's in Donatello's character, and I think it would have been a gutsier move. Uh, on the on the parts of the writers, but anyway, um, he is ultimately uh, kind of a casualty of war anyway, and uh, the Raphael is uh, is is uh, really freaking out on the turtles, uh, saying, "See, we should have gone after Shredder in the first place because, and and, and we should have been a united front because, uh, you know, yeah, we have this whole thing with the Tetanodrome, but but uh, see, look what happens when you underestimate these people." And and now uh, Bebop and Rocksteady have beaten the crap out of Donatello, and it looks like he, he might not make it. Uh, I don't want to give away the end of this if you haven't read it yet, but um, as I said, he's not dead, but he makes a pretty major sacrifice, and it's going to be interesting to see just how long that lasts, um, because if uh, the status quo we're at at the end of this goes for more than a couple issues, I'm going to be pretty impressed. I uh, j just, you know, you, for... for um, for a comic book, uh, especially to do something like that, and you know, let it let it stick for a while, because uh, it's crazy. Uh, but but anyway, it's kind of what I would what I expected would happen. But it was pretty exciting to see, nevertheless. Uh, the folks that thought that Donatello really was dead at the end of forty four, and uh, finally paid attention to this book just because it looked like they might be doing something gutsy like that, I think were uh, you know pretty naive. I uh, we we I uh, pretend to kill off people in comics all the time, and I, uh, you know, this isn't one of those we kill him and then we bring him back to life things, he's teetering on the edge, but uh, in comics, even if I think you might bring a character back in six months, um, unless it was announced, hey, we're killing this character, uh, I think I'm, I need to see a body buried or cremated or something. Uh, we got to the end of 44, and he's laying there battered and in really, really bad shape, and um, I actually flinched. Rarely do I flinch reading a comic book panel, but I actually flinched when uh, Bebop or Rocksteady 1 was, uh, was like, uh, um, oh, so that's what it looks the the inside of a of, of a turtle shell looks like, and I was like, oh my god, wow, really? Uh, but even still, there was no reason to assume that he was dead right at the end, and it caught everybody by by surprise because, as far as I know, IDW didn't really publicize that this was going to happen or anything like happened so much in comics. So maybe that's the reason it took people by surprise so hard. Uh, but that's also, I think, although in IDW's defense, they don't. Uh, tend to telegraph major plot points in books like the big two do. So um, maybe there was reason for people to think that maybe that was going to happen. But, I mean, that book was doing like 80 bucks on eBay and stuff. Uh, all of a sudden, people were paying attention to it. Uh, and it's kind of sad that a thing like that had to happen, uh, that, that kind of uh, shock novelty thing. Uh, for people to look at this, because uh, these are really solid stories, uh, wonderfully well-paced. Every scene um, is furthering story and uh, there and, and um, furthering character development and revealing things about our characters. Uh, so anyway, once again, as always, uh, this is a really, really solid issue. And um, I'm also, by the way, really excited about the Baxter Stockman stuff. Uh, this guy, ever since the micro uh, series issue that was done with him, uh, he's He's become one of the most fascinating characters in this book. Uh, he he was a character that um, I think uh, I and a lot of the characters in the book uh, really underestimated at the beginning of the series, and he is one of, if not the best, uh, master manipulators, schemers in this book, and uh, what is going on with him at the end is uh, is fascinating, and I can't wait to see where that goes. Uh, so it's really cool that with a thing that feels like, uh, at, at the beginning, this is going to be kind of an, after, an aftermath thing, I am as riveted as I was with the Technodrome stuff. So anyway, thanks again for watching, and I will bring you some more Comic Vaults as soon as humanly possible. I am Captain Logan, and happy reading.